self-love is the keystone to most psychosomatic maladaptive behaviors and and expressions of life. When you lock in self-love and self-worth, we then give ourselves permission to orient ourselves into a more healthy relation with the world and ourselves that includes healthy, healthy joy, healthy love, healthy connection, healthy pain, healthy pain, which a lot of people don't speak about, healthy discipline, healthy, all of these things, they get to live in a space of being a healthy human. Brandon Collinsworth on the show today. I'm gonna to link to his video bio here. And I wanted to get him on, not just to talk about his story, because he's told that many times, including a couple of TED Talks, which you can find in the links. He talks about self-love, and I wanted to look at aspects of our life where this really feeds into and how we can live in more alignment and interconnect with the sacredness of life. We talk about this at length, ritual, ceremony, initiation, plant medicine, and using different tools and practices to actually show up better in life. The conversation is truly rooted in that self-love foundation, and it makes for an amazing conversation. So I hope you enjoy as much as I did. Please subscribe if you can, that would help the podcast. So many people do not subscribe who listen. Please don't make that one of you. Enjoy the episode with Brandon Collinsworth. You're um, in London right now? Yes, I am in London. Yeah, in, in my van. I'm, I'm living in a van at the moment. So it's that's uh, amazing, bro. It's amazing. In this, do you know what? The hardest part about living in a van is the story I attach to it. So the story around, and I'm thinking about this lately. In the winter, the story is different to the summer. In the summer, you're like, you're a god. People are like, you're living in a van. It's fucking great. Like, oh, just so much freedom. And the winter, people are like, are you okay? Like, right, right. <laughs> there's this like juxtaposition of, of like, why, one, why would you do that? But, but two, like, are you freeloading? You're kind of, there's this, and it's my internal yeah. dialogue. It's my father. It's, it's the wounds that I carry that are like, what are you doing mm. with your life? But it's always in relation to how other people, are perceiving it and the conversations I'm having, but it's chalk and cheese. Like in the winter, it's dark. You don't really care what's around you. You're just batting down the hatches and just making it through. And I've never emerged so much out of a season because yeah. essentially, essentially living outside, it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. People always have opinions, man. I uh, I've been a nomad, high level nomad since two, 2016. High I'm at a home base. What's high level? Yeah, high <laughs> High level means instead of sleep, just sleeping on couches, like I, I'll, I'll get like a, I'll rent an apartment or something for like, more like a little bit longer. It's a little more bougie nomad, okay. But it, it, but it's been like it's been like that since 2016. Like I've, wow. I've not had a home since 2016 when I walked away from my companies, and a lot of people have criticized, and then a lot of people have like been impressed by it or like inspired by it but i can tell you like i've had those moments too where i'm like what the fuck am i doing and then it's always worked out bro that's the thing it's like to get what to to get what few have we have to do what few will do and if everybody if the system was set up for everybody to flourish everybody would be flourishing so the the truth is you living in your van is actually what 99% won't do, which means you've just unlocked the doors to the success that 99% won't have. And that's the thing, man. It, it's all, all about going the different direction than the crowd. That's the key. And all the greats do that. And that's the path least traveled, or as Robert Frost said, like I, I was in the woods and two paths diverged and I took the one less traveled by. And that's the that's where the courage has to come in play. But I can just say from like my own experience too, and I've gone broke a few times as well on the journey, bro. Like fourteen dollars in my bank account, and everybody thinks that I'm fucking balling and shit like that. And it's just been a part of removing everything that is small me to like step in everything that is like my truth. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let's tap into that a little bit. Like say I said the other day that I've never. I've never had uh, this least amount of money, but I've never felt more powerful. And I thought about that and I was like, what does this actually mean? Like, am I just tricking myself to try and like put a positive spin on my life? But I was like, no, I truly, 
the connections I make in the community, the work mm-hmm. that I'm in, I've never felt more powerful. There's some interesting rebounding that's happening of like, yeah. never had this this less money, but I've never felt like more, more incredible. So could you talk a bit about that and what comes with maybe feeling like you're at some sort of bottom or like some mm-hmm. on the verge, some precipice so that you there's no way but but the other way, you know? Yeah, it's it's initiations. It's uh the lost art of initiation. And um the problem in our modern society is like especially for men is there's we're, we have no initiatory practices. Whereas once upon a time, our ancestors and our elders, there were tried and true ancestral initiatory practices that helped men step into manhood from boyhood. And oftentimes that was, that was done through a contained encounter with the unknown. And because we've lost those initiatory practices, what happens is, is men, especially in our society, we initiate ourselves to getting drunk. We initiate ourselves from sex. We initiate ourselves from anything trying to feel like we're stepping into a new chapter in our life. But deep in our DNA, our DNA longs for those initiatory practices. And it is scary because there's no blueprint. Whereas like once upon a time, your ancestors, my ancestors, there was a blueprint. What's happening in our generation is we're like, hey, we have to initiate ourselves. And so we take these leaps of like, yo, I'm gonna, I'm walking away from everything. I'm traveling the world. I'm moving into my van and I'm gonna see really what I'm about. And that's that's a scary process because the ego loves to identify with like, I have a home, I have a car, I have a mortgage, I have like th- all these things that make sense. But the truth is, is that's the ego's truth. And what I've learned is once we remove all the non-essentials all the weeds essentially that's when we can really plant seeds of our potential and our truth and our growth and that's a scary process but that's what you're that's what you're in it, it's in uh alchemy they would call it the negredo or the, this phase of decomposition and in alchemy negredo is the first phase of alchemy where you're deep beneath the soil nobody sees it it's murky it's musty it's challenging at times but inevitably that's the space where the seed pulls all the nutrients in to inevitably like blossom and become the flower. And then the flower is the thing everybody sees. And they're like, oh man, wow, you're great. Like you, you're doing it, but they never see those moments where we have to go in to the, the, the shadow work and into the cave and like build whatever we need to build. And that's usually done through like an initiatory practice. And I'm learning, you know, the more, we get comfortable of stepping into the cave again and again and again, because it's not just one time, the more we activate our potential. And so every time we step into the unknown, we step into van life, we step into nomad life, we step into a new job, we walk away from a new thing. That's ourselves essentially activating an ancient practice of initiation within our DNA that inevitably pushes us to a higher level of our truth, at least in my opinion, in my experience. That's what I'm I'm witnessing time and time again as I've walked my journey and seeing a lot of my brothers also walk their journeys as well. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's important to keep checking in with that and keep initiating into discomfort and leaning into those practices? Or or is it just one stage in our life that or one thing that, you know, like what's that balance yeah. between also addicted there's tendencies towards keep keep diving in, keep doing things uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And then that yeah. becomes a pattern, right? Great question. And we see this in the, the spaces of healing. Um, there's a lot of people that are addicted to healing. There's a lot of people that are addicted to self-help movement. There's a lot of people that are addicted to plant medicine. They just keep going and going and going and chasing the high. And what I love about yoga is they have a concept in yoga called the sadhana. And the sadhana is intentional practice, how you show up every day on the mat inevitably how you show up in your rituals inevitably how you show up in your daily practices when those are like rooted and healthy i feel like those clear the distortions so that we go on as we go on this journey we know when to dive into the caves and we know when to say it's not time to dive into the cave it's time to be in my season and just be still or build or deconstruct or be silent this is why it's so important for us as instruments of 
this, you know, of, of the universe of God, whatever you want to call it, to be clean and to detoxify our our expression. You know what I mean? That's why the the the, the health and fitness is everything. That's why the mental health, the meditation is everything. That's why practices like prayer bring us back to center. That's why, like the food and what we put in our body, the toxins, both environmental and even people, as we remove all these things, I think we get more clear and we're able to tap into our inner guru in, to a point where we we then know what path we're supposed to take. And I feel it's a muscle, you know, you can't skip from white belt to black belt. You got to go on the journey. I feel like self-mastery is the same thing. We've never been introduced to this idea of like mastering ourselves we've been taught to master history which is we know completely a lie master science master mathematics but a journey into the self is a different thing and so what i'm learning for every person who's going on that journey to like learn about themselves a lot of people do like a self-help course and they think that they're a black belt i was once told that the philosophy or the theory of change the brain integrates instantly and it takes the nervous system three to five years to catch up. So as we go on this journey, it takes time to master oneself. But as one begins to acquire more tools, we then get better and better at discerning how to move. And when we're moving powerfully, potently and aligned, success is inevitable byproduct. So a lot of people see like my, my gram and they see like, how is Brandon working with Nike and core power yoga and doing all these things? They don't realize that these seeds were planted in 2002. And then 2002 to 2012, nothing really happened. Nobody even knew who I was. And 2012 to 2016, it was like a lot of building. And in 2016, I went broke completely. 2020, I went broke completely, mm -hmm. only to land in 2023. And everybody's like, wow, man, he just like, you just landed on success. It wasn't like that. It was it was a process of going on the journey from white belt to to, to black belt it, it, for my martial arts uh, aficionados out there. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is with humans that see someone and immediately think it's happened all their lives? What's that rooted in? I mean, it's it's the it's the perception, bro. It's like the Instagram. The problem with Instagram and the reason why I try to be as real as possible. Like just recently, I put up a video of like me just breaking down in front of people about my mom, is because nobody shows the the, the grind. Nobody shows when you wake up in the morning and you're fucking you you missed your alarm clock. You're late for everything. Your cell phone's not charged. There's no gas in the car, and everything's fucked up. And that happens to me at times. They only show like, oh man, just hit this certification, just reach this new height, just reach this new thing. And the grind behind the bright lights has been um, diminished instead of celebrated. And I think that that's the problem is that people, people want to skip the process because inevitably the process requires one to go through pain and suffering transformation is suffering but there's that quote that always says like there's two pains there's the the pain of suffering now with the potential of success later or this is this the pain of being okay now and the the pain of regret later when you look back and be like i wish i would have so i think a lot of people they they have this distorted view on reality and people need to get more comfortable with going on the journey and what's crazy you know in our space people set goals you spend vision boards all that stuff you you have manifestations affirmations declarations those are just like those are just like guiding posts because when we truly step into the in the path it's going to take us places we could never have imagined and that's that's even more scary for example, like you're on your journey right now. You know what I mean? You're staying true to your heart. You're you're stepping into your dharma. There's something in you called and you probably have an idea where you're going. But what I've learned is that oftentimes that is just the beginning of what is possible. So it's and that is scary. <laughs> it always feels that's, the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that's scary for us, a lot of people. They're like, bro, this is just the beginning. 
but to yeah. go on that journey and be okay with like, and people hate to hear this when I say this, like be okay with like, for anybody who's going on the journey, you might go 10 years with nothing changing. And then that one year comes and everything changes. Mm. Can a person commit to, to their thing, their purpose long enough for everything to change like the bamboo tree where you're watering it watering it watering it and then seven years nothing changes then in three months mm. it shifts and my career has happened like that on many yeah. money fronts yeah there's one word that comes to mind and it's trust because it's trust. hard to fucking trust it's hard to trust that it's good you're gonna get through and i'm i mean i mean i feel like i mean it now as you as you so rightly said i'm like yeah trusting and i'm showing up and i'm consistent like it's heard the other day it's easy to win these days because you just need to be consistent because so many people don't, aren't right and it's like you're going to yeah. be uh, enhancing um well, yeah you're going to be growing quicker um if you're just showing up every single day and just just chipping away at it um absolutely yeah. to add to that chris i would say that one of the blessings that I've been given is I've worked with a lot of the perceived successful people that you see on like the gram. A lot of people, the top coaches in the game, a lot of people, net worths, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, a couple billionaires. And let me tell you something. Greatest gift I got from being around them is really is realizing that they are just as fucked up as everybody else. They're going through the same struggles. They're going through the same challenges. And, and a lot of people, when they put them on pedestals, they're, they're, they're living in illusion. The moment people can realize that like nobody really has it figured out mm -hmm. is the moment where we begin to liberate ourselves and celebrate ourselves more rather than comparing and competing with these, um, these lives of illusion that we see on the gram often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you always need to keep checking in with that. I think I felt that early on that money was not the way and I rejected it for a long time. It's probably because I'm in the position I'm in now, but now I'm like having to reshift my relationship with money because I yeah. did the I did the into the wild. I rejected, you know, more than money, fame and what was it? The quote, the uh, David Theroux quote, more than fame, success, give me truth. And I was like on a hunt for truth to just yeah hit to the road and like just travel with and have more richer experiences with, you know, not very much money because that I found mm. that like soulful and meaningful and, and learning so much about the human story through, through like just hostels and being around people and just, mm -hmm. just not like isolating myself because with the same word in Spanish, you might know this in, to insulate is to isolate. So when we mm. get money, we we seem to hoard, which you know doesn't happen in nature, but we do this and it insulates us. Great, comfortable, beautiful, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it isolates us. And that is also mm -hmm. a big, big thing with um with getting money. But yeah, the money journey for me, it has been like a yeah, I've had to reconnect with it quite quite big because when you when you just when you when you believe something is innately wrong or um mm -hmm. can it, 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 it you know what what for me really resonated was it makes people cautious when you have money and i had this story around like money i was just rejecting it because it complicated things in it and, and people wouldn't um, get to know the real me if i had money mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. so interesting so psychological so and maybe enter the individual versus you know yeah but the pathologizing I've, I've listened to this podcast recently and if you haven't heard it i'll send it to you it's the emerald podcast Please. do you know emerald I don't, it's no. the, the revolution will not be pathologized that's, that's powerful it's so good it's so good it talks about i guess uh on mass like how we have pathologized psychology um and how we develop terms and we've done this in the west but it's permeated the world on how we have pathologized, I guess, not just like language, but um, healing on a individual mm. level, trauma, right. uh, narcissism, <clears throat> and all these things that yeah. you categorize and, and put into. And it's kind of where cancel culture comes in as well, I feel. They talk about it and, they, and, th and there's no space for collective, uh, maybe collective experience that 
is as equal to and and he talks about these forces at play you, you can speak mm-hmm. about this these these forces these energies and we've again somewhat put them into categories um mm-hmm. and individualize them in a way mm-hmm. and it's it, and it's very alarming when it's reframed in that way because what are we missing out on what can be healed through a drumbeat that we're not considering in a, yeah. in a therapy room what you know like dissociation oh it's a bad thing is it because a lot of tribes use it in a way yeah. that's it's powerful like just dance and get into a trance to dissociate from yeah. your body to connect to something bigger um yeah. rich it talks about ritual it talks about connecting and devo- devotion something greater and bigger than yourself like who's to say all of the stuff and this is a part big part of the podcast that all of the stuff that you're thinking you need to fix and heal and sometimes it's it comes from a, a healthy place and it's not right or wrong but what gets rejected and the consequences of that is um that we don't um account for forces that we can't understand for um mm-hmm. being in community with people and and the stuff not being ours essentially mm-hmm. like the, the energies that, yeah. that isn't ours and it, it doesn't need to make sense to us but yeah mm-hmm. yeah there's a there's a amazing psychotherapist named francis weller mm-hmm. i don't know if you've heard of him but he does a lot of soul work and one of his courses is called the alchemy of initiation and he looks at the lost initiatory practices that we've lost in our modern society. And exactly what you were talking about is exactly what he touches on is that we've lost pretty much every pillar of indigenous rights and collectivistic community structure in this Western phenomena. And other countries are losing it as well. And it's maladaptive. It's one of the reasons why people are so sick, lonely, tired. It's reasons why traumas are lodged in the body instead of moving through. Because once upon a time, if one person was traumatized, it became a it became a, a collective trauma. And it was the duty of the tribe and the village to help that trauma be moved so that that individual could continue to be a strong pillar in that community. Now we are told that we have to do everything on our own. We're, we're told that we have to, you know, we have to live in these echo chambers of our own minds. And then you get things like the DSM that diagnose us and create all these crazy labels and pathologies that further identify us and label us as defunct products, like we're broken by the very virtue of how our brains work instead of looking at us as beautifully imperfectly beautiful we're looked at as as flawed all of these things are subconsciously impressed upon us from the time we are children and so much so that it just lives in the subconscious and people don't even realize that they're operating out of a space of indoctrination rather than truth the, the journey home is to get back to these spaces of truth. And what the ancients knew is that nature was the most honest place you can go to. Mm-hmm. Silence, honest place you can go to into Pachimama, into the soil. And this is why there's a, a, a pilgrimage for so many people to go back into plant medicine, vision quests, sun dances, and into these indigenous spaces to have a contained encounter with the unknown. But it's something that's so important in this day and age to be able to integrate back into our being and what i'm learning too is you know you know money is just a spiritual energy it's a it's a law it's the law of abundance and and as we become more aligned we will inevitably become the energy energies needed for us to self-actualize will appear and that, that that appears in the form of resources that appears in the form of connections that appears in the form of also cash or whatever resource need is needed to further self-actualize. I think that when we make the money the end goal, we inevitably end up missing out on a lot of the other things that money can't buy, which is like love and community and connection and resources, certain resources like health, our inner health, our outer health, our community health. So there's a this is a you know, for, for my 90s kids who played video games and there was like Zelda and like Mario, Super Mario Brothers, man, this is like the, this is like the most complex reality 
RPG game you could ever play, but it's winnable. And I feel like it's winnable through the heart. It's winnable through remembering. It's win win winnable through nature. It's winnable through using these ancient practices that our ancestors have used for thousands of years to tap back into source. And then instead of it becoming this deflating, defeating time where AI seems like it's inevitably going to take over, we find our orientation in the soil of it all. And we actually get to co-create with other individuals to create our version of this, this new earth and this new world where we, we have one foot rooted in the ground and the other foot rooted in the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. How do you, well, I, one thing that comes to mind when I think of you and I, knowing your story has been told a fair few times, uh, mm -hmm. which surprises me when people look at you and like, oh, you're overnight successful. Like this has always been this way. It's like you've, yeah. you've told your story, like do at least just search and it'll, you'll come up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but one thing that comes up is is the self love piece. And it's it, yeah, I feel I like it. it underpins the whole of your story. So maybe you're just giving an insight into like what that journey is now like mm -hmm. for you and how you're navigating that daily, like what things still come up and, and how quicker can you get back to like yeah. accepting yourself. So so I sat in ceremony the other day with with mushrooms and one thing that I was feeling so deep and like this is the one thing with mushrooms where i feel we're able to sit with your with with, with um, i'm with be able to sit with my experience as a man feel that mm -hmm. emotion to sit with it mm -hmm. to feel it for an hour like just to sit mm -hmm. with the capacity i have to feel for myself mm -hmm. and if i don't have that i'm going to be maybe may, maybe from a love point of view from a self love point of view trying to and it's it's such a you know, you hear it all the time. The capacity you have to feel for yourself is equal to the capacity you have to yeah, yeah. feel for others. But I've never felt that so profoundly because I was looking around the room and I wanted to reach out and I wanted to connect and I wanted to embrace others. But what it allowed me to do was feel that that might be a nice thing to do. But if I'm doing mm -hmm. that from a place of wanting to just phys maybe it's a physical thing I want to physically feel embrace because I don't feel that for myself and it was so mm -hmm. subtle but so deep and I was like fuck no I need to really sit with this and I, I stared at the fire for a you know a good 20 minutes <laughs> of of just like I'm not leaving this fire until I feel that for myself and you know it's okay I didn't get uh, fully there and I know there's no arrival of like okay yeah, now yeah. we're but it was closer to it and it was just a very, very powerful experience. But I thought mm -hmm. I'd share that. Yeah. But yeah, the, the self love, man. Uh, how's that been showing up? And what, maybe what harm have, have, have you acknowledged along the way of where that's yeah, yeah. fed into your relationships with other people? Yeah. I mean, you know, there was a moment in time where it all clicked. And just because it clicked doesn't mean that it was like, it, I don't have to work daily at it. Mm. But the set point became once I had that realization of self love and self worth is the pathway and is the key. That's when my whole entire journey changed. I mean, self love at its core is this idea that we're going to acknowledge the miracle that we are flawed in everything. And, you know, one of the few of the questions I asked in my TED Talks was like, can I love myself like there's nothing to fix? And a lot of people, when they hear that, they're like, always trying to fix themselves. I can love myself when it's that I can love myself now. Or can I celebrate the parts of me that nobody celebrates? A lot of people celebrate the parts of me, parts of themselves that like society applauds, but they don't celebrate the parts of the one's person that like nobody applauds. Or can I love the parts of me that I deem the most unlovable? Like for a lot of people, that's a hard thing to say because there's parts of each one of us that we kind of don't like. But what I'm learned, what I've learned is like self hate and self love cannot live at the same time. You have to choose one. It can't be like, ah, I love this part of myself, but I hate this part of myself. Mm -hmm. But when you start to lean into like, I love this part of myself and this part of myself served me once upon a time but now gets to change and transform into a deeper level of self-love. 
then the set point becomes more of a loving expression and that carries over into everything. And as I went deeper, I started to realize like a lot of the pathologies that I had, like like codependency, abandonment wounds, savior complex, little like love addictive tendencies, like wanting to be chosen, mm-hmm. wanting to be seen, wanted to like be picked. Um, it, it all stemmed from me not seeing my worth. Why did I not see my worth? Well, somewhere along the line of me climbing out of the streets to the skies, I was told that I wasn't good enough. I told that I wasn't lovable enough. I told I was told I needed to have the perfect body, the perfect resume, the perfect this to be chosen. I went on that journey and I got all that, man. I, I went to the Ivy Leagues. I, I was ripped. I got signed to Nike and I was still miserable, bro. It was like, holy shit. Like I did all that and I still don't, I still feel like shit. I still feel horrible. So what's the trick? Like, where did I lose? What, what, what did I, what did I miss? And I realized that it was that self-worth piece. A lot of people who are successful don't love themselves. A lot of people become successful out of this desire to, to try to prove to the world that they're worth it. What would the world look like if everybody just was sitting in self-worth? They probably would take different paths. They probably would choose stuff that lights their hearts up. They probably would dive into passions and their talents they would step into art rather than business they would step into and that's what self-worth allows but our society doesn't say that our self our society says you need to make money you need to have a home you need to be this and if you don't have that you're not good enough and when you do get that one day you'll be good enough until they realize that the trick is is that you spent 20 years going for that thing And you get there and you're still feeling like shit. Self-worth and self-love opens up the doors to every day being with your own best friend. Being with your own beloved. Filling up your own cup. And for me, that practice, really, every morning I wake up, I just woke my eyes and say, I love you, bro. I love you, man. I love you. And I try to feel the love that flows through me. When we're standing in self-love, it is the most potent filter. Because we stop entertaining toxic people. We start to nourish ourselves better. We stop entertaining toxic habits. We start to protect ourselves because we are our beloved. And then what happens is instead of people or us looking for people to complete us, I need those friends to complete me. I need business partners to complete me. I need the right bank account to complete me. I need the right lover to complete me. Instead of us attracting from a place of lack, we're attracting from a place of wholeness. And instead of people or things being a completion to us, it becomes just a compliment. It's like, oh, you're, I'm good, I'm complete, and and this is a welcomed addition, but it's no way and by any means defining me. If it goes, it goes, and if it stays, thank you. And that really is the process of like self-love, but it has to start with us. It is not out there. And that's the that's the another one of the tricks that society's played on us is it it's put our worth, our love, our our dreams, our salvation outside of ourselves in religion, in politics, in money. All the ancient teachings point us back to ourselves. The sooner people realize that it's right here and all the inner work that is done here inevitably shows up in our external reality, it's all a mirror, that's when this space becomes the most sacred space one could reside. A person doesn't need to go to no temple or no ashram or no shala in the middle of the jungle that they can realize that the guru lives here, the ashram is here, the temple is here. And how would one take care of a temple? How would one take care of a sacred ashram with love, kindness, and care on on all days and all ways? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. That the addition, everything else is an addition. That sitting with that is can be an incredibly powerful practice. Just seeing everything else is is good too, but without it, I'm 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 good. It's it's, yeah, it's incredible to to reframe everything like that. Yeah, man. Yeah, because then there's no, then then codependency doesn't live. And codependency is this 
we live in a world of um, one of the pathologies that's real is codependency. Everybody thinks they need something to complete them rather than I am enough. Mm -hmm. How it's, it's interesting how culture and individualist uh, capitalism is, is feeded into all of this somewhat and how it's very transactional and it's permeated throughout our media and, and everything mm -hmm. that tells us that we need something external. But then I think the biggest thing and what I've come to realize is from a, a lot have, do you have kids? Not yet. Not yet. Um, so I do not. But what I've realized from my own upbringing, what's tried to be curbed and rewarded in terms of, and it's such, it comes from like a a good place, but it lacks wisdom um, when you reward certain emotions and reject others because we have terminologies yeah. around good and bad and what's allowed yeah. and what's not. And it comes from a fear, probably point of yeah. view that, that, parents are like no 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 don't like show that emotion and then what's rewarded you end up kind of chasing and rejecting and suppressing other things that are equally as valuable and hold as much wisdom um what exactly like, yeah i'd like to ask you what is that motivator I, I feel like a lot of people will agree with this and they're like yeah I'm, I'm i'm getting a lot of rewards financially and 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 in the system we're a part of i'm rewarded but yes what's not what's pushing that is my lack like i i fear certain things and i don't want yeah. them so i'm running away from them like yes yeah, so i don't feel i'm good enough so it fucking allows me to show up in my workspace even yeah. even more like it's a powerful precursor to to things mm -hmm. um and i don't know which ones you tell me um what which one's more powerful being maybe what drives you now which is of service uh, mm -hmm. from from a healthy grounded uh, right. i am enough place or what's what's driving you to keep working with night working in this capacity yeah, showing yeah. up on podcasts like what what is it in my in my ted talk i, I use the analogy of the seed and the orange tree mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. how in our society the orange the orange is considered the pinnacle of the orange tree seed but in nature, there's no hierarchy. Mm. It's all celebrated from seed to fruit. And as that seed is growing, it's never like I'm not enough. It's always like I am enough and growing. I'm evolving. I think human beings, we are gifted with the power of willpower and free will. And I think human beings are the only creatures that can sabotage self-actualization. <laughs> we've been given the gift but we yeah. can sabotage it and therein lies the beauty of the human experience what self-love does is it doesn't say there is better than here it says i'm going to celebrate today i'm going to celebrate tomorrow i'm going to celebrate my yesterdays as all one beautiful part of the process of our evolution from inevitably embryo or to, from birth to death from seed to fruit what i've learned is like part of the human experience is pain and pain a lot of people shy away from it we shy away i mean there's so many studies out there people do not like pain mm -hmm. but controlled pain the pain of a workout the pain of breaking out of old habits towards new habits, the pain of going on that run you don't want to go on, the pain of consistency mm. rather than letting chasing dopamine highs, like chasing discipline and consistency. This inevitably allows for us to continue to open the pathways of our own evolution. And you know what? There's a lot of people in these self-help spaces that are like, yo, life is just, just trust life. Take, let life take you where it's going to take you. You're going to end up where you are. If that was the case, 99% of people wouldn't be living or, or everybody would be living their purpose. The truth is most people, I would say 99% of people are not living their purpose. They're not living their highest expression. And they'll, they know that if you peel back the layers, they know that. Why? Because it, it, it takes some, it takes discipline. It takes, it takes awareness. It takes cultivating the tools it takes sharpening the tools to inevitably 
continue to up level and evolve ourselves into what we're supposed to become. What we're supposed to become, that's different from each and every person. This is why it's so important to tune in and say, what is it I'm trying to evolve into? What is what lights me up? What does that look like? Is it I'm supposed to walk away from this whole entire life that I was told I was supposed to live? This might mean I got to break up with my girlfriend. This may might mean I need to like meet, meet new friends. This might mean I have to give up something to let something come in, something new that is more alive. That journey can be scary for a lot of people. But the tools work, the work works. And when self-love is the precursor for that, it gives us the courage to continue to take that leap into the unknown. Because the truth is, just because somebody lives 90 years doesn't mean they've lived 90 years. There's people that have lived 20 years that have lived more life in one year than people who have lived 90 plus years. And a lot of people, you know, I always hear like, Brandon, Colonel Sanders started KFC when he was 76. Everybody can do it. Colonel Sanders was an anomaly. The truth is, like, the time is now. And if you got the health, you got the momentum, you got the youth to go for it, go for it. Like, all in on all in, what's the worst thing that can happen? We die in the process. That's it. But when one makes friends with the fact that we're going to die no matter what, and then there's going to be a moment in time, whether it's like life just ends randomly or you're on your deathbed. I, I constantly hear like the last, the last insights of people on their deathbed is like, I wish I would have not played it so safe. I wish I would have spent more time with the people I love. I wish I would have taken that leap. I wish I would have written that book. My goal and my intention of how I live my life and what I share is to, to first tell people that they're powerful remind people to love themselves and then remind people to like love themselves enough to struggle, meaning to dive fully into the fires of transformation and allow that to shape your life in a way that is beyond the mind and more aligned with art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another one was, I wish I'd have let myself be happy. Exactly. 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 <laughs> And, and what's a trip is when you let yourself be happy, that also involves sometimes pain. Mm -hmm. It involves sometimes staying true to yourself, staying in your boundaries, speaking up, mm -hmm. leaving bad situations. And I a think, lot of people want to avoid pain. Yeah, yeah. I think, but a lot of people enjoy the pain as well. I, I think a lot of people revel in it and because it comes from that i'm not good enough i don't feel worthy enough to feel joy i don't feel worthy enough to feel True. good and i've 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 had that moment quite <clears throat> quite a lot when i feel things are going really fucking well and i don't feel comfortable i'm like something doesn't feel good or, or it'll get bad soon or, i shouldn't enjoy this because it's not going to last <laughs> yeah that's a great point chris <laughs> there's a quote that goes if it goes like this. It goes, if it is familiar, even if it is unhealthy, it will be comfortable. Yeah. We, if we, it we, is unfamiliar, if it's unfamiliar, even though it is healthy, it'll feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Say that again because I interrupted you. Yeah. yeah. If it's familiar, so if it's familiar, mm -hmm. even if it's unhealthy for you, it will feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. If it's unfamiliar, even though it is healthy, mm -hmm. like you're experiencing joy, you're experiencing love, but it's unfamiliar to you, it will feel uncomfortable. And this is why self-worth, self-love is the keystone to most psychosomatic maladaptive behaviors and, and expressions of life. When you lock in self-love and self-worth, we then give ourselves permission to orient ourselves into a more healthy relation with the world and ourselves that includes healthy, healthy joy, healthy love, healthy connection, healthy pain, healthy pain, which a lot of people don't speak about, healthy discipline, healthy, all of these things, they get to live in a space of being a healthy human. And that's the beauty of what psychotherapy can be at its best. And the flip side of that is like, 
at its worst, it throws people into these these echo chambers and these siloed spots of like, I'm not good enough. But it is best when self-love is locked in, it becomes a foundational piece for everything else to be, be built. Mm -hmm. So often when you go on this journey and you start to think in this way, it shines a big light on the people around you and what affects you and how different you perhaps are to those around you. And I know it's important for you to surround yourself with um, individuals that think in a certain way, um, mm -hmm. which is, makes me even more grateful for this call. Cause I'm like, Brandon, Brandon wants to take a punt on me. This is like, I, cause you're, you're serious. And I'd also like to talk about that, that navigation of taking life very seriously Mm -hmm. who I surround myself with is important. Like I'm yeah. going to have to say no to a few people and I've only got certain time for certain people, like more time for others. Um, That seriousness coupled with not taking life too seriously, that dance between the two. I'd like to touch upon that, um, but I can't remember my first question. It was around, um, yeah, it shines light on other people around. Yeah. So how are you navigating that? And how have you in the past? Because, one thing I've definitely struggled with trying to understand in my own inner world, like connections are important. Uh, those have been mm. with me since the beginning versus making yeah. time for, for new people who are more aligned. Yeah. I mean, the truth is there's, for example, are, are you into football? Not so much. No, yeah, not so much. Okay, like used to be. It was, was very unhealthy. It was very unhealthy. Well, well, like how many how many teams are in London? In London or in or in Europe? Yeah. Like who? Like in the European League, how many teams are there? And the English League is like twenty one. Yeah. And how many win the championship? Yeah. <laughs> how many win the championship? Yeah, one. One every year. Same thing with the NBA. There's a lot of NBA teams. Mm -hmm. There's only been one bull. Some people are okay with just making it to the league. Some people want to play on a championship team. What does that entail? It, it, it entails a certain set of behaviors, beliefs, and showing up that will not like work at, at, at a lower level. To win a championship, you have to embody championship level behaviors discipline focus but inevitably the rewards are you become a champion and what i've learned is like i don't want to play what's the worst team in the english league at the moment i don't know maybe wolves because they weren't doing so well <laughs> yeah like yeah. like that or i don't want to play on like they would say like the detroit lions in, in yeah. football and uh i don't want to play on that team i want to play on the championship team and what i've learned is in holding that standard, I'm bringing in championship level individuals into my life who don't have time to, to fall into toxic habits. They don't have the bandwidth to entertain, you know, like anything that is not of the highest level that are committed to love, committed to truth, that make things easier rather than harder. And that's one thing is like, if people come into our lives and they make it harder and it feels like we're having to carry another brick up this <laughs> path called life, like that, that sucks because yeah. life is already hard enough. And I'm learning the more and more I surround myself with championship level individuals, it becomes joyous and you get to appreciate their skill set. It's not about everybody has the same is the same. It's like Jordan, there was Pippen, there was Robin Rodman. Speaking of the bulls, the Chicago Bulls greatest basketball team ever. They were all different, but they were all committed to a certain goal. Mm -hmm. And as I started to stand in my self-worth and realize that I, I deserve the highest level of a woman in my life. I deserve the highest level of success. I deserve the highest level of abundance. I deserve friends that are not going to cower down when it gets hard. They're actually going to step up and fight side by side with me for truth and for love. That's when my life started changing. And once I saw the shifts and I saw that it doesn't have to always be hard. In fact, what makes things hard oftentimes is us not standing in our worth and entertaining low level energies. But when you go ahead and you align yourself with champions, success becomes easier. 
abundance becomes easier, love becomes easier. And then we're like, well, for some people who are not standing in their worth, when this moment they feel ease, they're like, I don't deserve this. And they self-sabotage. This is why the self-love and self-worth piece also opens up the doors for success to be easy because you put in the work and then you drop into this flow state of being able to play and create and connect on a level that is a lot more aligned than if you just entertain anybody else coming into the circle and into, into your sphere of energy. The truth is, is when we allow people that are not doing the work into our sacred circles, it detoxifies the container. You cannot bring a collegiate athlete onto a Hall of Fame NBA team and expect them to play ball. Mm -hmm. Then people are going to say, well, what about my family? What about my friends who I grew up with? It's not that they're not still in our lives. It's just they're not playing on our team. Meaning like the championship team, if, you, if we use the Bulls, for example, they have so many spots. You're playing ball with them. It's not like Jordan didn't have cousins and brothers and like still in the projects or something that he didn't check up on. So I still have my sister in the projects. I love her. She's my soul. She's, she's amazing. She's giving me four nieces and nephews. But I'm very, very, very sure and committed to like the path that I'm going on. And so I have to surround myself with certain people in order to bring the championship home. Mm -hmm. It's a visceral example. And I think it's, it's amazing when you can frame things in, in ways in which everyone can understand, everyone can relate to, like, what is it like to be on a team? You know what it's like to be on a team with people who are kind of not putting in as much work and effort yeah. and haven't, haven't got the right. same values and goals. So it's just right. such it's such a great example because everyone can feel I felt it in my body like yeah what does that look like for me how am I creating that 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 team that all shares the mission Oof, mm -hmm. it hit me man um, then, go on and then you get you know and then if you want to keep it and you want to if you want to keep it and you want to keep winning you have to continue to keep training the tools. I know a lot of athletes that have made it to the pros, but they didn't heal those toxic habits from the amateurs. And inevitably they lose it all. Inevitably they bring a woman in or something like that. I know a lot of men who bring the wrong woman into the championship levels. And because of that toxic pathology ends up destroying it all. So this is why like when people meet me and they're like, bro, you're kind of cutthroat. It's like, I didn't work 20 years mm -hmm. to get here to allow some person to come into the circle and throw off all the years that I've been working to get there because it only takes one wrong move, one wrong decision, one wrong, I go out, I get drunk, some shit goes down, or I hook up with the wrong person and it opens up a new door, or I make the wrong decision with a business partner and next thing you know, I've derailed all the work. Self-worth, again, says that not only do we deserve success and abundance, but it also gets to be easy because of the work that you put in to becoming who you, 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 you become. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also think that's how karma works. And I recognized, yeah. I recognized the other day that we don't even have a word for it in our language. And karma for me is, is literally like, you know, you deserve it. It's exactly, you, you know, you know, you are doing the right things and you're, you're valuing yourself to make decisions, choices. And you're like, no, nah, I'm fucking, this is me. I'm creating this. I'm constantly choosing. And like, it's exactly. just a direct, direct, like spin on like, you know, you deserve it. So it comes your way. It's beautiful. Exactly. Do you plan on, do you want children as well? Yes. Yes. So I'll tell you as a man, it, it took me a long time, but the last couple of years I've been standing in like my King energy. And when you stand in the King energy, 
a heart led king. And if you just embody this archetype and feel it for a second, like how would a, a heart led king move as well? Not just any woman would be able to have access to a heart led king. Mm -hmm. He would actually probably choose his Cleopatra or his Aphrodite and know that he deserves it because of what he holds, his kingdom, what he holds is worthy of that level of woman. And as I've gone on my path as a man, and now stepping into my young chiefhood, or I would say my, my king years, where I'm, I'm calling in fatherhood, and that's going to be coming soon, part of the standing in our worth, and this is for women and men, for women who are also on the path, mm -hmm. when we're standing in our power and our potency, we're creating the environment for us to attract the highest level of partnership across the board, the highest level of love across the board, the highest level of opportunities across the board. And that's, again, Chris, why it is so important. You see in my own world why I'm so adamant about protecting the space because we're not just doing it for ourselves. Although men kind of start off as like a, a, a isolated thing, at least in our society, but we're building the foundation and the soil for our our family's future, for our lineages, for what our next the next generation is going to stand on. And inevitably, you know, for single men or even for people who are not single, for our partner to be able to come into a nourishing environment. And I'll tell you, the queens of this planet, the goddesses, if we don't create that, it won't hold it won't be able to hold or or allow for that space to be nourishing and safe enough for that for that to, for for that energy to be held mm -hmm. so all the work we're doing right now on ourselves is inevitably setting up the foundation for the highest expression of of our lives to, to be to be lived on yeah absolutely uh i think it's on us it's all, we're, just, we're responsible for it all but women, to a large extent, do set the bar because men will reach they it. Do. Men will go <laughs> to that do. bar yeah, if, yeah. if it's there. Yes. We, we need like structure. <laughs> we need direction. We'll meet yeah. it and we'll, and we'll go. Yeah. But women do. They're the gatekeepers. I'm fucking yeah. reframing. Like you're one of the last guys I'm getting on this podcast because I just have guys on the podcast and people are like, is it just for guys? But I'm I'm changing just just because I'm resonating more. It's just maybe a new new flavor of getting more women on because yeah, I've listened to something around like gatekeeping and what that actually means, what mm -hmm. it represents from a feminine point of view. Um, and it's interesting. I, there's so many ways I can take this conversation. I'd love to, to talk to you maybe just on that then about like the indigenous aspect and in going to Peru and, and understanding yeah. women's role and what you've witnessed yeah. in those, in those societies. Well, well, women, women are the gatekeepers. <laughs> They they are they are the portal openers and they they are superhuman goddesses beyond anything. And I say this about all women, although I also know that the wrong woman can throw a man off. The right woman can open up levels to a man that are beyond anything that he could ever imagine. And almost every great man, you know, they have the quote, behind every great man is a great woman. And I've grown to appreciate and just celebrate the goddesses of this planet as I've also softened into my own feminine energy. I think that's what's happening. And I re yeah, <laughs> and as we, uh, as we become more connected to the feminine within ourselves, the softer, subtle of your energies with ourselves, we're able to see that in the feminine expression outside of ourselves. When I was in the jungles in 2017, um, I did ayahuasca ceremony and my intention was like, all right, I want to know how to, to, to call in my goddess, my one, my queen. And ayahuasca, powerful psychedelic, all of a sudden, these five goddesses are sitting in front of me and they laughed at me and they said, oh, you want one of us? They're like, let us show you how, how many reasons that you have in your life right now why you will never pull one of us. 
and it just flashed all my integrity slips, my like little funky behaviors behind the scenes. Every time I'm like not living my truth, every time I'm out of alignment, they're and then they they like laughed and they said, "You think you're protected? There's nobody that's more protected than the goddesses that we have on this planet. And until you step into alignment, you won't even see us. You won't even be able to pick up that frequency. So." All that shit that you're about right now, you need to do the work. This is 2017. And what has had to happen as a result of that is it's been five years of me cleaning up. And what has happened in that space is all of a sudden, I have goddesses all, I know them, like soul sisters, friends. They're, they're, they're everywhere, but we will not see them if we're not aligned. And so for me, it's been a seven year process of actually detoxifying all my bullshit so that I can align myself to be in resonance with the feminine, healthy feminine frequency and inevitably call it my queen. We as men, we kind of have to earn it. We have to earn that level of the feminine. Otherwise, we're going to continue to call in exactly what we are inside and if we are messy and like distorted and off and not in alignment and not living in integrity as within so without it's going to repeat until we align this and so the yoga again is about yoking cleaning detoxifying all of what is not in alignment so inevitably you can call it our our divine mirror and so it's a journey and again it takes time to clean, to, to detoxify, to, to establish a new nervous system set point, to, to begin to embody the teachings. But once that's there, then the, 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 the feminine becomes safe. It, it, they feel safe in one's presence. And truly, the most important thing, you ask any women, what is the most important thing for them? Like a, a, a conscious woman, it's to feel safe. Mm -hmm to feel safe in a man's presence, to feel safe in the masculine so that they can express their highest level of truth, their highest level of who they are. And from an indigenous standpoint, you know, women have always been celebrated. They're the mothers, they're the portal openers, they're the gatekeepers. And we should be in awe and reverence and bowing to, to the, the people who bring this world forward. Because without, we've all, we all came through a woman, all of us. That's an undeniable fact. Wow. None of us arrived here any other way. You know, yeah. powerful man, powerful words. I've never, never been said with such clarity. And, and yeah, man, you're such a good speaker. Um, so I, I think I've rejected. I rejected my masculine for a long time. So the pendulum swung all the way over here, and that's when I got into yoga, and you know, going to India, and and. Mm -hmm. just feeling differently and, and doing different things and it's often what happens with with guys they go to this more spiritual side and it feels good and it's softening and more connection but then that that masculine side gets rejected and and lately mm -hmm. i've been maybe this plays into it lately i've been just feeling grounded in the in the two more more than ever and maybe that is the compass the capacity piece that you talked about that i have and now i'm feeling into and understanding, like seeing the feminine in a very different way. Mm -hmm. It's it's powerful. Yeah. I think it's important and it's an important conversation to have. And one of the ills of our society right now is they're trying to go into this non binary space where we completely eradicate what masculine it means to be masculine, what it means to be feminine. And this could be, turn into a whole nother podcast, which I know we don't got time for, or maybe we do in the future. But Archetypally, um, we're built different. Men are durable. And that means that we get to hold something. Like we like we get to hold a strength. We get to hold a pillar. We get to hold a groundedness. If we go back to indigenous times, we would make sure that the tribe was protected. We would make sure we brought the food home. We would make sure that some of the like more laborious activities we took care of and the woman would nourish because they felt safe. They would feed 
They would love, they would, they would, they would hold the heartbeat of it all. I feel like there's a reclamation of that as well. And the more and more of my, my beautiful sisters in my life, the more I talk to them and the more I have conversations with them, the more they want that they, the more they want to feel not only safe, but the more they want to have stable ground to stand on so that they can be in their feminine instead of having to adopt all these masculine traits. Like, yo, I got to like go to war. I got to like get a corporate job. I got to be, a, and I got to be a mom. I mean, cool. But like that, if you're just a mom, that's enough. That's amazing. You're a mom. And if you want to be other than that, cool. But I think as men, we have to create safe environments for the women in our worlds. And the only way to create a safe environment for the women in our world is to create a safe environment within ourselves. And what happens in the spiritual space is we overemphasize this feminine softening, this yin energy, but that is not necessarily what is needed to hold down a village or a tribe, or if you're really going for it, being a chief. Now, what does that look like? Well, it looks like, learning how to harness the fire and the flow, learning how to ha harness the heart and the fist. This is why martial arts is so important. Martial arts teaches us how to be both soft and dangerous at the same time. And that is okay. That is actually a way more noble pursuit than just being soft for the sake of being soft. To be able to hold the fire and harness the fire and root it in heart, that I feel is the most noble pursuit of a man. And there's a quote that one of my master teachers in Peru always said, he said, may all emperors be poets. May all emperors be poets. Heart and fist. And when those are aligned, that's when I really feel like it creates a space for the feminine to flourish, not only outside of ourselves, but inside ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then within that, I feel you can recognize what's needed in the moment because you've exactly, you, you, you've, it's two extremes. And then your life flows, your life flows in between them. It's true, man. It's exactly. So true. Exactly. Yeah, man. Um, conscious of time, your time. Um, is there anything that you want to specifically speak to in this moment? Always like to just open that up. Anything that's on your heart right now or anything you want to, you know. Speak well, I'll to. just give a shout out to you, Chris. Thank you so much for reaching out via the gram. I get a lot of messages on in my inboxes and you just came super correct i felt your energy and I'm, I'm, I'm celebrating you shout out to you for staying true to yourself walking the warrior's path leaning into your dharma and trusting the journey and thank you for bringing me onto your platform and sharing me with your audience and i'm excited to continue to connect consider me a brother on the path you know always a student always humble and always learning. And there's a Siberian quote that just came to mind, but it says, um, be humble for we are made of earth, be noble for we are made of stars. I feel like we are all a reminder, a sacred reminder of both of those aspects of ourselves, both earth and quantumly limitless. And it's, it's uh, individuals like yourself that are like, courageously going into the caves of transformation that open up the doors for more of us to step into our truth and our and inevitably a deeper level of self-love so thank you for having me on it's an honor thank you brother i really appreciate that that's i've never been honored on the podcast in such a way so i appreciate that thank you for seeing absolutely me. yeah it feels good man yeah i i just yeah i'm grateful for you for, for just speaking speaking that and walking that path and I'm sure you've had to say no to a lot of things to to make your yes is more powerful and and to to bring in all the stuff that your mission is about. Um, I, I so greatly want to get you back on to just dive into maybe just a just specific topic because there's not a question I couldn't answer you that I wouldn't be intrigued by the answer. So yeah, I'm, let's I'm, do it. I'm we'll, grateful, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Grateful for your for your connection, man. Nice. absolutely bro and where can where you. people find you as well and warrior retreats maybe speak about yeah about. yeah um my gram is my living diary a lot of people think i'm posting for everybody else but a lot of times i'm sharing my own process and I, i've realized like in, in authentic sharing that mm -hmm. that's that's when my gram that's when my social media started to really grow is just sharing my truth 
And then Warrior Retreats, the application's about to drop for Warrior Retreat 8, and that's curated rite of passage from the jungles all the way to the Amazon. And again, super honored to be able to share one of the most sacred spaces in the world, Peru, with, with the world. And so for those that are listening, yeah, reach out, join the journey. And, and my message to everybody's listening, just remember that you are a miracle. You are one of one. There never has been, never will be again another you. Yes, we all have things we can work on, but don't get caught up in one day. Get caught up in now and allow self-love to be the foundation you stand on. And when we're standing in that space, everything else that grows from that is is also a reflection of that love rather than it being a reflection of something else. So celebrate yourself, celebrate the journey, and know that the world is truly a better place because you were here. Beautiful, man. Well said. Yeah, one of the things on your sharing on Instagram, like you're sharing quotes, you're sharing speeches and everything. Like, cause I didn't know who you were. I knew like your content, that side of it before I even knew you or put face to it. And everything was, there was a resonance to it. And I was like, this guy's got good taste. It's like, I resonate with everything. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we got to connect. And I just followed that, man. So yeah, it's been a while, but yeah, awesome. Okay, bro. All Big right. love, Chris. Appreciate it. Respect. I want to send you this send right. to the podcast I mentioned. Yeah. yeah have a beautiful day man keep shining thank you brother enjoy your day proud of you peace